<laughs> Larry catches the biggest bass. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. I'm super excited for this today because I have done one of these videos every year for pretty much the whole time that I've been making YouTube videos. For the past three years, I've been coming here probably about this exact same time every year to Bass Pro Shop, taking part in the Spring Fishing Classic. So basically what happens is Bass Pro runs a really good sale where you bring in like an old rod or reel and you can trade it for a new one. But you still have to pay for it, of course, but you get a percentage off. So it's not based off the dollar amount that you trade in, it's based off of the one that you purchase. So you bring in a rod, bring in one that works because normally they donate the ones that they get. So, so you bring in a rod, they give you like a little coupon. In the past, I don't know how it'll be this year, but they always give out like a little coupon. You take the coupon up to the register, say if you buy an $80 rod, you get like $15, $20 off of that rod, or you buy a $200 reel, you get like $30 off of the reel. So, it's a great opportunity to trade in your stuff, get new stuff, and I take advantage of it every year. Some years I do it two or three times. Normally you can only do a rod or a reel. You can't do it on a combo, that's the only thing. Once you get a little bit of fishing experience, you kind of start wanting to, you know, make your own combos rather than just buying the store-bought combos. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I've got this old Vengeance, Abu Garcia Vengeance. This is one of the first reels I bought out of Walmart, like 50 bucks, and it's been through its paces. It's a good rod, but I wouldn't mind a new one. Honestly, I want another one that I can keep in my truck and I can just use it like for a truck reel because I go a lot of places and a lot of fishing opportunities arise. I have a lot of like fishing opportunities, but sometimes I don't always have gear with me. So what I want to do today is kind of build like an ultimate tackle box. Um, I want to buy a, I'm going to trade this rod in, hopefully buy a reel. They didn't have the bin up front, so I'm sure it's just in the fishing section. They didn't have the bin up front and I'm sure it's probably just up here in the fishing section. So I'm gonna trade this rod in, get a, I don't know if I'm gonna get a rod or reel, whichever one is more expensive, that's the one that I use the coupon towards, but I'm gonna get a rod, reel, and a whole bunch of baits. I'm kind of feeling Texas here. It's starting to warm up a little bit. I wanna, you know, set the hook on a few fish. That's always a good time. So um, we gotta find the bin first so we can get our coupon, then we can start making our selection. But what I'm thinking is we get all of this stuff and I kind of give y'all like the basics to bass fishing in my mind kind of like how i think of bass fishing like before i really started bass fishing because i feel like that's how a lot of people think of it so starting with stuff like worms jigs crankbaits like a red rattle trap is really good this time of year early march also this sale lasts from march 7th to the 27th so at the time you're watching this you probably have about a week and a half or so to get to your local bass pro i try to get this video out as early as i can because i know a lot of you are like oh man this is already ended this sale's already ended so it's a good thing uh you got to come check it out and also it's just good if you're eyeballing combos everybody has a rod and reel combo that works but like they don't really use it switch it out come get a new one why not live free be free <laughs> all right guys so we're gonna see, uh, pop this in here see where they got their coupons. okay um so just looking at the sign it says save up to hundred dollars so hundred dollars max and the sign says if you spend five hundred dollars you get a hundred dollars off um so 40 to 79 dollars you get $10 off, 80 to 120, $20 off, 120 to 175, 30, and so forth and so forth. So uh, we'll get that off of probably, right now I'm thinking a reel. Ooh, I have some good ones in here too. I want to get a reel I've never used before. I'm kind of feeling adventurous. So let's switch it up a little bit. Hmm. I don't know which one I haven't used, so that's the thing. Luckily, I've been blessed to use a whole bunch of different ones, so we're going to have to find a new one. Thank you. Good, thank you. Okay. You just give them the rod, put the rod in the bucket, tell them that you put a rod in the bucket, show them whatever. They'll give you the coupon. Um, let's see. I'm going to walk around and explore our different rod options first. The first one I walked up to is called the whooping stick. <laughs> 30 bucks. I kind of like that. It's red, white, and blue. <laughs> it's a big spinning rod. That might not be bad. We'll keep that one in mind. Maybe not for today, but oh, these look sick too. These are the carbon lights. I see these often. I know these are pretty popular. Yeah, that's sick. That feels good. I like the little like marbling it looks like it has to. Mm, let's see. We're gonna keep looking. The Bass Pro is so dangerous because you get in here and you start looking around and you're like, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that. And then next thing you know, you came in here for like, a $30 item, but you've left with a $400. All right, I'm 
kind of digging this one right here. This is the Bass Pro Shots Pro Qualifier. I know the old Pro Qualifiers had like a little bit of silver to them. Good two-piece rod, seven foot medium heavy, exactly what I was looking for. 100 bucks, so 100 bucks with my coupon. For 100 bucks with my coupon, I'll save 20 bucks, so it'll be 70 or 80. Look, that's that fisherman's math. Oh, I'll get it for <laughs> We're not gonna do a budget today. I'm gonna go no budget. Um, yeah. So that rod, I'm thinking that one because I feel like it'll probably last me a long time. It'll just be like a good solid rod that I don't have to worry about, you know, anything happening to or I've been guides while it's underneath the seat or anything like that. So, um, let's see. Next, we need a real Bass Pro Shops branded rod. Who am I today? Maybe we get a Bass Pro branded reel as well. That one, that one's kind of cool. It's all black, it has the big handles like I like too. All right guys, so we got Mr. Zach to give us a six, eight to one pro qualifier. It matches the rod and it looks sick. My favorite color is blue, but I kind of like a baby blue. These are like, like a little navy blue, but the red in it kind of sets it off. It looks sick. So found the jigs. Honestly, this time of year, you can go, I feel like you can get away with any size jig this time of year. I like this one eighth. This is like super small though. I need a little bit heavier hit than that because if it's windy, you probably won't be able to cast that too well. We're just gonna get something and throw it in the car. Yeah, three eighths black and blue, and then it kind of no, that's not black and blue. This is black and blue. That's a quarter out. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll do black and blue. Let's get two of them because I'll lose one for sure. We've learned that in other challenges we've done. Um, let's get one that's natural because we want to imitate like a bluegill. But we'll do three eighths for the natural one. That looks sick. We'll do two of those. Okay, so we got those. All right, got jigs. Now we need trailers. Let's see where we can find a trailer at. Oh, found some cool looking crankbaits. We're gonna snag a couple of these too while we're over here. Where I'm thinking we're gonna go, there's like a pretty deep dam on the pond. So we're gonna do this. Got a good old crankbait. Throw that in there, see what else we can find over here. Ooh, big Bass Pro glide baits. So we'll have to come back in here and do that. Really good time to throw a little lipless crank. Can't ever go wrong with the red color. It's like the perfect time of year to throw that red crankbait. Especially you get a little bit of wind. Mm. It can be deadly. So we're gonna get one of those. Actually, let's get two. We're balling today. We're getting two. All right, so we got some finesse jigs. I didn't know that they were tungsten jigs. I was looking at the pack. Um, and these are 20% off. Also, it goes with the Bass Pro Shops theme. Save your wallet a little bit. I'm sure they're probably 20% off for the classic. You got the all blue, like the electric blue color. And then they're kind of short and compact with like big flappers on them. So that's going to be good. I'm going to get one of those. Actually, we're going to get a few of these. Oh, and they have different lengths. So like these are good for like trailers and then you could Texas rig those. Let's see what all they got. Black and blue will do that. Um, you can do watermelon red, of course. All right, so one thing I'm trying to do better of this year is like throwing new things. I'm trying to get into like more tournament stuff. So I'm, you know, having to adapt, throw new things, try new things out. Um, so one thing that I really, I don't know if I've ever caught a fish on a wacky rig. I know it sounds crazy, but I, it's just something I never threw. Um, so they have these wacky stickos. The only thing is today we only have a bait caster. So that's not really ideal to throw a wacky rig on. Maybe you can, I don't know. I never throw one. Most of the time I see people throw one spinner rods. But we could Texas rig these and they're four inch Senkos. I could get some like one knot hooks and like a little small Texas rig weight. And it could be really good because I'm sure they're probably thinner in the middle Then that tail will probably have really good action to it. So we're gonna get a few packs of the wacky rig baits we're not gonna do it today, but we'll be able to wacky rig these in the future and catch wacky rig fish. We're gonna do a pack of those. Can't ever go wrong with June bug. June bugs are awesome. This is the problem. I come into Bass Pro Shops, I start throwing stuff in the bin, and then next thing you know, you've left with $500 worth of stuff. But like I said in the beginning, that's why you get paychecks. <laughs> Such bad monetary advice. Please don't listen to me. Next time I talk to y'all, we will be out on the lake catching some big mouth bass. So. All right, guys, it is the next morning. We have made it out on the water. We got the pro qualifier and we'll pop the tags off of it. 
Um, the fish are actually busting this morning, so it's a really good time to be out fishing. It's uh, what they call pre-spawn, or what is called pre-spawn. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna split the line on the reel, and I put all of the tackle that we got in this bag right here. Yeah, we got a lot. This bag is absolutely filled to the brim. I'm gonna start off with this lipless that we got yesterday because I'm literally watching them come up and eat bait. So the cool thing about this box is all your line that you use, so like I have like 12 pound floral 15, uh, 10 pound braid, 30 pound braid, 50 pound braid. I think this is like 17 pound floral. So all the lines that I use the most, I can keep in here. As far as putting your line on your spool goes, everybody does it a different way, but I feel like I have the most effective way because you don't have to learn any new knots. I feel like a new knot for adding line to a spool is super unnecessary. All you need to do is this right here. Just go through one hole in the spool and then finding that second side is sometimes the challenging part, but I got it early. So once you get that, you just tie a simple overhand knot. So like a knot that you use to start your shoes and then you tie that again. Pull it tight, make sure it's tight to the spool. And then you're gonna cut your tag in. Most people use scissors, I'm gonna use my teeth. <laughs> I'm gonna get your tag in as close to the spool as possible. So I'm gonna have to try to I have to go get some scissors and cut that down a little bit more. All right, that's good. So what you're gonna do from here is you're just gonna start reeling. And the cool thing about this box is it keeps a perfect amount of tension on your spool. So you don't have to worry about um, the line coming undone, unwrapping. First thing that I normally do whenever I get a new reel is I just tighten everything down. Because each new reel is gonna cast different. It kind of saves you from that initial backlash. You just put, you know, $10 worth of line on your reel and you don't want to have to worry about replacing that. All right, so we're gonna start off with this little red lipless. I like the profile on it. Kind of a little bit bigger. It's beefy, it looks natural. Man, today could be a really good day at fishing. Like we might be able to skip up underneath that dock right there and catch a few. All right, so you see those bubbles? That's where I've been watching fish come up and blow up at. Oh yeah, first cast, everything's tightened all the way down. Cast pretty good. It's a good smooth reel, I like it. All right, so the different retrieves, this right here is a yo-yo retrieve. So I'm just gonna raise my rod tip, reel the slack out of my line, drop it, raise it, reel the slack out, drop it raise it really slack out drop it and that just kind of imitates like a struggling bait fish dying bait fish you'll get bit a lot of times on a retrieve like that i'm gonna open this up a little bit and then the next retrieve just going to be your typical you know cast it out reel it back in you can give it a couple pops oh, that's not a fish i think i got some grass yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, this thing cast really nice. The cool thing about like this time of year is you can cast right up against this grass line and sometimes if you can get parallel enough to it, fish will come out and eat it off of the grass line. It's pretty satisfying whenever you have that happen. That's another reason why I like to wait. I'll come up and get a couple cats before I launch the kayak because sometimes there'll be fish just like hanging out right there at the boat launch. Look, see, one just blew up right there on the pond. Oh look, there they are. Okay, we're gonna try to get a cast over there. Oh, perfect, perfect. It's gonna be interesting today because I left the net. Every time you leave the net, good things always tend to happen. All right, so the goal of today is, I know we got a whole bunch of lures, but the goal, main goal of today is not necessarily catching fish on all the lures. We're finding a lure that works, and then I just want to catch a whole bunch of fish on that lure. We're going to try to throw everything today, but the way I do my challenges here is I just buy things that I think will work, because I think there's no point in, I've had days where I'll buy, you know, $100 worth of fishing lures, and there's only like two or three that are really working good, and when, every time I cast them, they're getting bit, so... That's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're gonna try everything. I'm sure the jig will work. I'm sure the worms are gonna be good, but 
you know, sometimes some lures do better than others, just depending on the day. So we're gonna try to do everything, but. We gotta let the fish show us what they want. There we go. There we go. First one on the red lipless. I might take a laugh around with this one. I'm kind of feeling it. It's not a really big one, but it's our first fish of the day. Yes, sir. It's fighting good. Don't have a net, but we have pliers. So. He's not that big. Let's see if we can catch a bigger one. There we go. Fish number one, good old largemouth bass, not that big, might be a pound or so. It's a good and healthy fish. Awesome. This one probably spawned a couple years ago, maybe last year. It's a fresh one. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we got it bit a couple times right there. That's the only reason why I said let's throw this a little bit more. Yeah, the only reason why I want to keep throwing this is because we got bit like once right there. Then when that one ate it, that was like the official bite. But that was definitely two different fish. Oh, there we go. I was looking off daydreaming. We got a fish on the jig. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad one either. I didn't bring the net again. I was getting ready to reel it in. I was looking over there daydreaming. I'm like, I wonder what's on that side of the pond. But that one's fighting pretty good. I'm gonna try to flip it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Look at that one. Let's go, let's go. Oh, let's go. Oh, that's fish number two. All right, so all that we have, the only lure that we have left after this is that crankbait. Um, well, actually we have a whole bunch of, I bought probably way too many worms, but it's all good. <laughs> like I said in the store that all that stuff is probably gonna be more, more so probably just to keep in the truck. There it is. All right, boys. How about that? That's second fish of the day. That's a good one. He has a little bit of a scar on him. No bloody tail. So earlier, I was doing a little bit of fishing. Um, or looking around, not really even fishing. I was just looking. I saw a whole bunch of beds in like another pond. So, Boom! Let's go. That feels good. Swim. See you later, sir. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I was sitting over there, or I was sitting daydreaming, thinking about, hmm, I wonder what's gonna be over there on that side. So I went down pretty far on this bank and didn't catch anything. So, since we got one on the jig, I'm gonna untie and retie. We're gonna switch over to, I think I'm gonna just do a little weightless Texas rig with that wacky worm. Wacky worm. Luckily I have some little short hooks. Bust out the old terminal box. We're gonna grab one of them. It's a big one. I need some small ones. Alright, there's there's that. Awesome. And I saw in the pack in the store it said heavy salt and all that means is that it's gonna fast it's gonna fall a little bit faster so in my case today that's not a bad thing for me at all because i would like to you know be able to go ahead and get it down i'm not sure how deep this water is but up there i know it's probably you know, three four foot deep so something that falls a little bit faster but still is weightless never a bad idea to try it Man. Got one on the chair, baby.
Oh, we still got that red crankbait. I don't know if it's even deep enough in here to throw that. Let's see. Oh, I need to tighten my drag up. That's what I need to do. Oh, good one. Good one on that worm. Oh, really good. Oh, yeah, boy. Look at that one. Look at that one. That's for my... That's where my drag slipped because he was big. <laughs> Look at that little hook. It's a little side tip for you. Throw as small of a hook as you feel comfortable with throwing just because when you do that, you can open in the corner of the mouth. When you throw that smaller hook, it's a little bit smaller presentation. And I feel like they don't really see it as well. And I mean, it's a hook is a hook is a hook. Man, this would be a really good kayak tournament fish. All right, since we got the board, we're going to measure it because we just have to. Oh, yeah. 22 and a half. Dude, I wish I could have caught this one in the tournament. <laughs> Look at that one, boys. Man, you can't tell me bass fishing is not fun. All right, I don't know what this one weighs. I'd say he's probably four. He has the body of a fish that's a lot bigger than four. But we're going to go ahead and put him back. Thank you, sir. I saw him swimming around over there. I had to let my worm sit a little bit. Go ahead, he's gonna do something cool. There it is. Awesome, let's go. That's three fish. Each one gets a little bit bigger than the last one. That's all you can ask for. We keep on on this trail and we can catch five or six more tonight. Man, I love this time of year. Shout out to Bass Pro Shops for the Spring Fishing Classic. I got all Bass Pro Shops brand new gear today. I feel like it's going pretty good so far. Let's see if we can't rig this worm up. It's going to be going really good if we can reuse this worm, even though I got a whole bunch of them. I like to use them as much as I can. Oh, I'm going to have to cut a little bit off the tip. No, the next thing I need to do is tighten my drag because dude, no, I think that was just a big fish. I know when I set the hook on them and I felt my drag like pulling, I was like, oh, this ain't going to last long. But luckily, it did last long. We got to hold it. <laughs> it landed them. Awesome. Look at that. I'm not switching up from that black and blue one. I'm not catching one like that. All right. We got to catch one on that red crankbait. So we might have to go. Ooh, excuse me. We got to catch one on the red crankbait. So we might have to go somewhere tomorrow and do that. Because as far as I'm concerned right now, we've caught two on like kind of stationary, you know, slow moving baits. And I'm seeing a lot of commotion up here in the grass. And crankbaits are cool, but they're not really the best lure to throw like in this type of area. So. I'm probably going to stick with this type of stuff for the rest of the evening. Hopefully we can catch a couple more. Um, if not, make sure you stay tuned because we are going to take that crank bed out tomorrow. And I think I have a couple places in mind that hopefully, I don't want to jinx us, but hopefully we can go catch a couple. There we go. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I was getting ready to reel it out, take it out, and make another cast. I'm sorry, Mr. Fish. That was that was bad of me. All right. It's fish number, what is that, four? Yeah. Awesome. See you later, sir. There's one. There we go. Feels like a good one. Oh yeah. Kind of looks like a spot, but I'm not sure if it is. It's a big one. Let's go, boys. On the red crank. This is a perfect time to throw red baits. Come here. Ah, gotcha. Don't come out. <laughs> this is a this is a good healthy one on that red crankbait. 
And this is like the perfect time to throw a bait like this. Something that doesn't dive too deep. You don't want anything that goes any deeper, probably like six feet. Depending on the body of water you're fishing, most places that I'm gonna be at. Like like that two to four range, two to six. Awesome. See you later, sir. Nothing like catching a love it. I love it when they do that. <laughs> Nothing like catching a good bass in the morning. Like I brought coffee with me this morning, but you're catching bass for breakfast. You don't need coffee. That's the next thing I was gonna say. The cool thing about this one is I've deflected off some steaks. It kind of has like a little wide roll to it. That kind of felt like a bite. It has a wide roll to it. So like it hits a stick and then it's like, shh. and I think that's probably what got them. Like when it hit the stick, it deflected so far off its path. It probably like triggered that fish to go up and eat it. There we go. There's another one. Oh, we ate it good. Man, we caught both of our fish today up pretty shallow. It's been a minute since we caught that last one. It's probably been about an hour or so, but that's too like kind of up there shallow. I went down one little stretch of bank and looked for a bed or looked for just any signs of bed. I didn't see any. I think we'll be able to bring him up. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> he ain't that good. But I went down one stretch of bank where I thought I saw a bed a couple weeks ago. One, this water is pretty dirty, so it's kind of hard to see. Look how he ate that. That's how you want a fish to eat your crankbait. If they're not on beds here, they're definitely like up there thinking about it. Awesome. Let's go, man. Not as big as that first one, but still fun. He ate it good. All right. All right. Chasing a bag, I'm racing the clock. Look at him flop, watching him flop. Used to see this in my sleep when I ain't put my thoughts in the car. I really was lost. Now I'm public with the soundscapes.